Hi there, so welcome to our Edexcel Chemistry 2.5 to 2.11 Ionic Chemistry Revision Session. Now, in this session, what we are going to be looking at is forming ions from atoms, forming ionic compounds, and how we can get the formula for them. The properties of ionic compounds and testing for different ions. We'll start by looking at ion formation. Now here we have an element in group one. We can tell this because we've got one electron in its outer shell. Now what will happen is this one electron here will leave, meaning that we now have more positive charged in the nucleus here and less negative charges around the outside. Now this will form a plus one ion. Now if we were to have two electrons in the outer shell, as we have here, we'd be in group two. Now we can lose both these electrons. So that one can go and so can this one. This will form a plus two ion. Now, if we go one step further where we've got three electrons in the outer shell, we can try to lose those three. So we'll move that one, this one, and this one. So we've lost three electrons. So we then end up with a plus three charge. Now, because we've lost three electrons, we're likely to be in group three. Now, whereas positive ions lose electrons, negative ions will gain electrons. Now, we can see here we've got something from group seven, which is the halogens. We can tell this because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons in that outer shell. So what will happen is an electron that perhaps we've lost from one of the group one elements here will then be attracted and it will join up to fill that outer shell so remember the negative electro uh, negative ions will form because we've gained extra electrons now this one will have a charge of minus one because we've got that extra one negative charge now here we've got uh, an element in group six because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in the outer shell. So we've got here space for two electrons. So we can gain one, two electrons. Now because we've gained two negative charges, we will have a charge of minus two. So this is the charge of elements in group six. Now we're going to look at how ionic compounds are formed. Now here we've got an atom of sodium and we can tell this is sodium because we've got one electron in the outer shell. Now we've only got the outer shell here. And this one is chlorine and we've got our seven electrons in the outer shell of chlorine. Now the sodium has one electron that it can lose and chlorine has space for one electron to be gained. So that one electron will move to fill that outer shell. So we've now got the inner shell here is now the outer shell. So we have a full shell here and a full shell here. So we have an Na plus and a Cl minus. So the negative charge cancels out the positive charge here and here to give us a formula of NaCl. So here we have magnesium chloride. Now we can see the magnesium is in group two, so it has two electrons in its outer shell, and chlorine, as we saw previously, has seven electrons. Now, the chlorine can accept one electron in its outer shell, so that becomes a negative charge. Now, because the magnesium has two electrons, you need two chlorine ions to accept those negative charges. So 
because we have the magnesium now has a full outer shell and so does the two chlorines we've got MgCl2 so we have an Mg2 plus ion and two Cl minus ions so you need two of the chlorides to balance it out so that gives us a formula of MgCl2 now our last one is quite complicated now this is aluminium oxide now aluminium is in group 3 so we've got three electrons in the outer shell now oxygen in group 6 has six electrons but space for two so if we move over our one electron and then our second electron we have now filled that outer shell but we've still got one electron left over here so we move that one electron into a second oxygen but this oxygen is not full so we need a second electron to fill that outer shell so we now have two, uh, two oxygens that are full but we've got a partially full or a partially empty aluminium so we can move these two electrons over to that final oxygen so now we have one two aluminiums that are empty or have their inner shell as the outer shell and we have one two three oxygens so this means our aluminium oxide has two ions the aluminium which is Al3 plus and the oxygen ion which is O2 minus now we've got one two aluminiums and one two three oxygens so we have a total formula of Al2O3 now there is a cheating way that you can do this if you know the charge of the aluminium then that gives us the char the number of atoms in the compound so Al3 goes to make three oxygens and O2- minus goes to give two aluminiums Okay, so we've looked at how we get ionic compounds now we're going to look at what ionic compounds can do so the first thing that they can or can't do is they can be soluble now soluble means that they will dissolve in water if they don't dissolve in water then they are insoluble now when you have solid ionic compounds they definitely cannot conduct electricity when they are solid so ionic compounds do not conduct when solid however when they're heated to a molten state they do conduct electricity now just remember molten means liquid now if they are soluble then they will definitely conduct electricity when they are an aqueous solution which has the symbol of AQ. Ionic compounds also have high melting and boiling points with the higher charges having higher boiling points and melting points than ones with lower charges. So something that has a 2 plus and 2 minus charge will have a higher melting and boiling point than something with a plus 1 and negative 1 charge. Now what we can also do with ions is we can actually test them to see whether they appear in a solution. Now first of all we're going to look at the anions which are the negative ions. So we can look for the halogens or the halides which are group 7. Now we can do this by adding in silver nitrate. Now if we have silver nitrate added to water and it has a chloride ion then it will turn white and we can see that with this test tube here now if we have the bromide then it will go a creamy color which is this one here and then the last one is if we have the iodide then it will turn a yellow color as we can see here so what we have is 
silver chloride here, silver bromide here, and silver iodide, which is here. Now, another anion that you might have to test for is the sulfate ion. Now, you can do this by adding in barium chloride, and again, it will make a precipitate reaction that looks like this. And here, we've got a white precipitate formed, similar to the chloride precipitate, but this time, we've got a white precipitate, which is barium sulfate which is insoluble, which is why we get this precipitate here. Now, the last one we're going to look at is the carbonate ion. Now, we can do this by adding an acid. And what you can see is the carbonate will react with the acid to produce a gas. Now, that gas is carbon dioxide. So let's just review. Silver nitrate we can use to produce a precipitate of silver chloride, silver bromide and silver iodide. Barium chloride will produce a precipitate of barium sulfate, all of which are insoluble. And then to look for a carbonate, we can add acid, which will give a fizzing reaction, which will give a gas of carbon dioxide. As well as testing the anions, we can also test for the cations, which are the, which are the positive ions. Now, we can do this with a flame test. Now, if we test the flame of lithium, we'll end up with a flame which is red. Now, if we compare that with the flame of sodium, which is orange, and then the flame of potassium, which is lilac. Now we've also got calcium, which is also an orange colour, but it's sort of a more reddy orange than the sodium colour. And then the last one that you need to know is copper. And the copper has a blue-green coloured flame. Now we also need to remember that we need to clean the metal loop that you can see uh, here, that they've used, uh, and here with an acid and a clean Bunsen flame before and after we use each different metal uh, compound. So what key points do we need to take away from this? Now the first thing we need to remember is the charges of the ions and making sure that we add those clearly so whether it is a 2 plus or a 2 minus or a 3 plus or a 3 minus ion. Next we need to remember our square brackets around our ion diagrams. We also need to remember our properties of the ionic compounds. So remembering that they've got high melting points and boiling points, uh, some are soluble, some are insoluble, and some, uh, in fact, they all conduct electricity when they are molten, so a liquid, or when they are a solution but none of them will conduct when they are solid, and that's because of their lack of free ions to move. We also need to focus on our tests. So silver nitrate is a test for the halides, so for chlorine, bromine, and iodine. We've also got barium chloride as the test for sulfates. Again, we get the insoluble barium sulfate formed which gives a white precipitate. We've also got the test for carbonates which is adding an acid which will cause the fizz and then we remember we get the carbon dioxide fizz with them. And the last one is doing the doing the flame tests for the cations and we get the different coloured flames with the different metal ions. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you again next time. Bye bye.